it's you. I search for you. My whole being thirsts for you. My body desires you in a dry and tired land. No water anywhere. Yes, I've seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen your power and glory. My lips praise you because your faithful love is better than life itself. So I will bless you as long as I'm alive. I will lift up my hands in your name. Amen. Amen. What that is reason to worship. Amen. Let's stand and join together.
what the Lord says. He is the one who made a road through the sea. Even through rough waters, he made a path for his people. He is the one who defeated the chariots and horses. He defeated the mighty armies. They fell together, and they will never rise again. They were destroyed as a flame is put out. The Lord says, forget what happened before. Do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I am going to do. It is already happening. Don't you see it? I will make a road in the desert. I will make rivers in the dry land. Even the wild animals will be thankful to me. They will honor me when I put water in the desert. They will honor me when I make rivers in the dry land. I will do this to give water to my people, the ones I choose. These are the people I made, and they will sing songs to praise me. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this night. A night of new beginnings. A night, God, where we turn our hearts over to you to begin this journey to the cross of Christ. A night, Lord God, where we open up and surrender all to you so you can do a new work in us. So God, speak to our hearts tonight your solemn message of healing and wholeness, of redemption and glory. Speak to us in this time. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. We are beginning our Lent series tonight uh, with this service. And um, our series this, this Lent, as I have prayed over it, really um, sought to see what God is leading us into. It is that scripture of, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season that we call Lent. As we mark the sign on, of the cross on our forehead tonight with ashes, we mark time that is set apart, uh, leading up to the cross and, of course, to the empty grave. It's a time in which we turn our hearts and our thoughts and our minds on our relationship with God. The prophet Joel, in these scriptures, calls to the people to fast so they might dedicate themselves and, and cry out to the Lord. And tonight, he cries out to us. A fast in the Old Testament was a time when no food was eaten. Things that pulled you away from the Lord were set aside for this time period as people approached God with humility, with sorrow for their sin, and with urgent prayer. They would fast in order to focus their attention solely on God and demonstrate not just true repentance, but true devotion. If you go back and you read this entire chapter of Joel, we learn that this prophet Joel has truly struggled, and the community of Judah has truly struggled. They just survived this devastating invasion of locusts. And then it moves on, they follow by this all-consuming drought that they've gone through. An entire reading of the prophet allows us to hear the hope that Joel offers, though, to the people. In God, he says, is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Turn on the news or read any headline, and the world might seem right now like it's been ravaged and with the gnawing and gnashing of teeth of locusts. The gnawing teeth of adversity and conflict, of injustice and terrorism and hatred and pain. Yet there is hope in God. Joel assures us of that. He reminds us that this is not the end. That the day of the Lord will come. That God will restore what the ravages of sin have destroyed. This Lenten season, we all have things that we're struggling with. And God knows what is gnawing at your heart and at your soul. For some of us, it may be the pain of loss or of loneliness of uncertainty or health issues or family issues. As people, we all long to be back in the comfort and the stability prior to the pandemic. However, today is the day we live in. Today is the day the Lord has given us. So I encourage us as we walk from this place tonight to take our sights off the past and be bold enough to dare to peer into the a future that's unknown, but a future that is already inhabited by a known God. A God that calls us by name. As we embark on this six-week journey to the cross, give your pain and your emptiness, your sorrow and your struggles and your worries and your weariness to the Lord. Give it to the one who makes all things new. Amen. God desires that joy for us to return to him through Christ. So let today be a new beginning. 
today, rather than giving up something that you will run back to right after Easter, like chocolate or soda or Facebook or TikTok, give up things and surrender those things which truly hold you back from a full relationship with God. Things like this. Guilt. Fear. The need to please everyone. Envy. Impatience. Anger. A sense of entitlement. Bitterness and resentment. Blame. Gossip. Comparison. Pride. Fear of failure or a feeling of unworthiness. Doubt. Self-pity, excuses, pride, worry, and addiction. We can all find ourselves somewhere on that list. God has so much more in store for you. But so many of these things are holding us back from walking into the fullness that God has laid out for us. But today is a new day. And God makes all things new. So this Lent, give these things up and surrender yourselves to God and let God create a new thing in you. Let's pray. Holy God, you are gracious and merciful. You are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love for your children and those who call out to you. You restore all things and make them new in a way this world cannot offer. Help us to lean into your love today, to rededicate our lives to serving you and to serving the world you have created around us. We ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by repentance and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now bow before our Creator and our Redeemer. Gracious God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. So, Lord God, pour your spirit out on the ashes we will receive tonight. May they be a sign of our mortality and our repentance. So that we, as your people, may remember that it is only by your gracious gift of grace that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, may we begin this journey. May this walk to the front and may the mark of the ashes begin in us a revival as we walk toward the cross of Christ and the empty tomb on Easter morning. We pray all of this in his holy name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I invite you to come forward and feel comfortable. <coughs>
look to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sins are before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Created me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away with your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach my transgression your ways, and the sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O oh God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Let's pray. change, and the one thing about looking to make ourselves better is that we cannot do it on our own. Amen. So we focus on these words.
that's breaking open and it doesn't just happen overnight. All these places that you'll feel breaking over, open over the next few weeks, don't go back to them. Amen. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I am about to do something brand new in your life. It is bursting out. Can't you see it? Amen. Go in peace.